Okay, so this video is a continuation of an old video. In this video, we are going to discuss some NAST entry test past paper questions which are related to the topic permutations, combinations, and probability, right? So we did till question 12 in the last video, which uh, is uploaded on our channel. And now we have to discuss from 13th question. Okay. So it is NCR plus NCR minus one is basically, let's say if we have 12 C5 plus 12 C four what is the answer okay now this is a general formula it is a property whenever we have ncr plus ncr minus one we get n plus one cr so we get this is n plus one we get n plus one cr okay now this question and this property is very useful for solving different questions because again as i said in the first part here we are talking about net nast entry test calculators are not allowed so obviously you need to do all these calculations on your own right so if you do it for this and if you do it for this that would be very time taking so what you can do is you can just simplify it to this version and solve this directly right so this would save time so in general, you should know all these properties as well, okay? Right, so the next question is the 14th question. Right, the probability that a three-digit number chosen at random is divisible by five. Okay, again, keywords, three-digit number, okay? So how many three-digit numbers we have? We have, we start, are counting after 99 it starts from after 99 like that is 100 we start off with 100 and we go on till 999 so that makes it 900 numbers okay but if you are not comfortable with um, this way what you can do is we have three digit number so we can have like three dashes and now we can think of it okay so in that how many digits we have we have one two three so on till nine we have nine and then we have zero as well right so zero is also zero is also a digit so we have one two and so on till nine plus zero as well so this makes it 10 digits right so we can play with 10 digits in order to get a three digit number but for this first position we can only have one to nine digits okay if we have zero that would make it a two digit number so here we can have nine then again for the second position we have all the digits in math that are 10 in total and again for the last one we have 10 so this is 900 as well okay so you either you can do it this way or this way either you can do 999 minus 99 or you can do it this way okay whatever way you're comfortable with you can do it that way okay so far we know that total number of three digit numbers in maths is 900 okay whatever way you do it it is 900 right so let's just rub one method just so we have more space and let's talk about the numbers that are divisible by five okay now think about this, uh, which numbers are divisible by five? If you talk about the divisibility test, every number that has five at the end or which has zero at the end is divisible by five. For example, 30 is divisible by five because it has zero at the end. 25 is divisible by five because it has five at the end. 45 is divisible because five. 125 is divisible because of five, okay? So any number, even if it is a three digit number, even if it is a four digit number, if it has five at the end or zero at the end, it would be divisible by five. So we have again three dashes because we're talking about three digit number, but this time the condition is it should have 
five uh, it should be divisible by five okay so for the last lot for the last lot we only have two options either it can be five or it can be zero and for this lot and this lot what options do we have again for this one and for this one any math number would work any mathematical digit would work and by any i mean we have 10 options including zero but for this first lot we cannot have zero if i have zero let's say if i have zero um let's say i have zero one five now obviously this number is divisible by five because i have five at the end but zero one five is not technically a three digit number right so for the first lot i have nine options from one to nine and for the second one yes i can have zero in middle so i have 10 options right so this way we have 19 to 2 that is 180 this is 180 okay again we haven't solved the question yet we need to solve the question what was the question <clears throat> we need to find the probability how do we find probability we will find this probability by 180 divided by the total outcomes the total possibilities whatever way you define the formula but this is what we have okay number of three digit numbers that are divisible by five that is 180 and total three digit numbers are 900 okay so this is b that is one by five so this is the answer. Okay. Now we have the 15th question. Let's talk about that. If A and B are disjoint, by disjoint, they mean that if we talk about the set A and B, they would not be having any intersection, right? This is A and this is B. Okay. So they don't have any intersection. This is what disjoint is. Then the probability of A union B is okay. Now, in general, in general, what is the formula? This is the formula. Okay. Probability of A union B is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection C. Okay. And since they are disjoint, their disjoint implies that this part would be zero. So we will only have probability of A plus probability of B. That is the D choice, right? But this again is a property. We should be knowing that. That in general, we have A. But in this specific case, when it is disjoint, this becomes zero. So we only have P of A plus P of B, right? Then let's talk about the 16th question. If a probability of a bulb being defective is 0 0.2 estimate how many defective bulbs there would be in 600 bulbs okay now what is the probability of a bulb being defective it is 0 0.2 right so 0 0.2 into 600 so this is how we calculate this and the answer would be 120, right? Because probability of a bulb, a bulb, right? Being defective is 0 0.2. So in 600 bulbs, approximately, this is an estimate, approximately 120 bulbs would be defective. Okay. Now we have the 17th question. Now you will see some questions are very, very easy. Some questions are easy. And then some questions are, I won't say difficult, but they are of um, a medium difficulty level. So you guys must be noticing that the difficulty level is varying from question to question, right? So you need to be very careful with time allocation. Don't spend too much time on easy questions. And this way you would not be having enough time for the difficult questions, right? Okay. The probability of getting five when one die is rolled. Now, this time we don't have any conditions. They, they are not saying that the die is biased to something like that. It's just a simple case that when we are rolling a die, what is the probability of getting five? 
the probability of getting five is equal to the probability of getting any other side because it is a simple die. Okay, it is an unbiased die. So the answer would be one by six because a die has six sides. So probability of getting any side would be one by six. Okay. Now we have the eighteenth question. If probability of B is seven by twelve, then what is the probability of this? Okay, now if this is B, then this is a symbol for not B, right? So if probability for B is seven by twelve, and we know that sum of probabilities is one, right? So this would be probability of p that is 7 by 12 and this is probability of not getting p since sum of probability is 1 we just subtract 1 we do 1 minus 7 by 12 and we get 12 by taking lcm and 12 minus 7 is 5 by 12 okay obviously i'm doing extra steps because I want you guys to know that you'll be doing this on your own. So whenever you solve past paper, whenever you practice for NET, never ever use a calculator with that, okay? Because in exam, you won't be having one. Okay, so we are done with the 18th question. Right, now let's talk about the um, 19th question. If A and B are independent events then probability of a intersection b is okay now we have two events a and b and they are independent right we are interested in finding out the probability of a intersection b now most of the times students end up choosing a but they don't understand that here they're talking about intersection okay Intersection means the questions of that slot type with, in which we use the multiplication sign, right? We write probability of A, probability of B, right? So obviously, we don't write probability of A and probability of B every time. Sometimes we use the total possibilities for this slot into total possibilities for this slot, stuff like that. But the underlying concept is same for probability as well, right? So C is the answer. And this is also a property. So you guys should be knowing this, that whenever we have intersection, we are multiplying the probabilities. <clears throat> right, so now we have the 20th question, which says factorial of minus nine. Now, as I said in the very beginning, in the first part, we cannot define the uh, factorial of any negative number. If you do that on your calculator, you can check that out, you get an error, okay? So it cannot be calculated. So factorial is only defined for zero and positive numbers and zero factorial is one. So anyways, for negative numbers, we can't calculate that. Nine factorial is this, but we have minus nine here, okay? So minus nine cannot be calculated. So don't mix up this with nine factorial look it is minus nine factorial which cannot be calculated because it is a negative number okay right now we have the next question this one if a is an impossible event then probability of a is now obviously we have been given with um, English statement and we need to write the mathematical version of that, right? If A is an impossible event, impossible means that it cannot happen, okay? It cannot happen. The probability of happening A would obviously be zero, right? So this means that C is the answer. Now in this question, we need the keyword was impossible, right? Okay. And then we have 52 equals. Now, what is 52? Again, these are the factorial questions, right? So if you think about the A option, think about that. I can write it as 52 
into 51 factorial and in the denominator I have 51 factorial. These two can be cancelled and I'm left with 52 only, right? So A would be the answer in this case. And then we have the 22nd question which says the factorial form of n plus 2 into n plus 1 into n is okay now we need to think about this for this question we should know that if we have n plus 2 n plus 1 and n the next number would be we minus 1 from the previous number previous number is n so next would be n minus 1 right divided by n minus 1 factorial and factorial right so these would be cancelled and we'll be left with this part only which is this part in the question right so the factorial form of this would be c because n plus 2 factorial can be written as n plus 2 n plus 1 n into n minus 1 factorial and I can cancel this with this. So this is same as this one. So this is the answer. Okay, so we are done with all the questions. I hope you guys would have understood them. If not, you can comment down below and I'll try answering every query. Thanks for watching. Take care. Allah Hafiz.